Hello. Ruth and I are very pleased to welcome you here back to Lis Escop, to our home, for this short act of worship on this Palm Sunday. And today we're going to look specifically at the story of the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem as told in Matthew chapter 21. So do follow it if you have a Bible with you. The order of service again is available online with some of the words that we're using, but it's not essential for joining in with us now. And of course, you can simply use the subtitles. This strange season that we're living in when we can't use our church buildings has reminded us that church is community before it's a building and our communion with one another and with our God does not depend on our taking bread and wine, great privilege though that is. But nonetheless, much of our security has been removed from us. So let us put ourselves afresh into the safest place possible, into the hands of our God. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us greet the Lord and welcome him amongst us using these words. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold, your King comes to you, O Zion meek and lowly, sitting upon an ass. Ride on in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is the throne of God, it endures forever, and the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the collect for today, for Palm Sunday. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. Amen. And now our reading from Matthew chapter 21, beginning to read at the first verse. When they had come near Jerusalem and reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on, him, on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. I imagine that a number of us at one time or another would have been on some kind of Palm Sunday procession around the community where we live. You know, I guess, the kind of thing. Just the kind of thing that we cannot do at the moment. You borrow a donkey from somewhere or other, you parade around with your palm crosses or palm branches. Possibly you have a musician or two who you can't really hear because you're in the great outdoors. And the best you get are a few quizzical looks from people out walking the dog or buying the Sunday papers. Well, maybe you've had a better experience than that, but that's been the kind of thing I remember. 
But even if your experience has been a little better, I bet it was nothing like what happened that first Palm Sunday in Jerusalem, when there was a huge crowd, palm branches being cut and waved, cloaks spread on the ground, and an awful lot of excited shouting. It was a bit like cup final fever. And as I say, probably very far from anything we've experienced when we've tried to recreate the scene. But just why did the crowd on that first Palm Sunday go wild? I suggest they do so because they know just what Jesus, coming back into Jerusalem on a donkey, actually means. They know, first of all, that this is a royal return. Jesus is coming back into the city as king. They would have known these words of the prophet Zechariah that we heard some of earlier. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This is a royal return. This is Jesus coming back into the city as king, just as Zechariah had prophesied. And you cannot read the Gospel of Matthew without being brought face to face with the fact that Jesus is King. The wise men ask, where is he who has been born King of the Jews? He's called Son of David numerous times. When Pilate asks him, are you the King of the Jews? He replies simply, I am. The soldiers mock him as King when they crown him with the crown of thorns and a sign above him on the cross proclaims him King of the Jews. And in his last words to his disciples in this gospel, he proclaims that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And this entry into Jerusalem that day is undoubtedly a royal return. But the crowd know more than that. They also know that this is a holy return. Ezekiel, in exile in Babylon, had had a vision of God leaving Jerusalem, rising out over the city, out over the Mount of Olives. This is how he describes it. Then the cherubim lifted up their wings with the wheels beside them, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. And the glory of the Lord ascended from the middle of the city and stopped on the mountain east of the city. What Ezekiel saw was devastating. God was leaving, leaving the one place where he was supposed always to be able to be found. Jerusalem would now no longer be the place of his presence, but of his absence. But now what Ezekiel saw is put into reverse. Jesus comes down from the Mount of Olives and goes back into the city. This is God coming home. And that is why the crowd shout out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The absence of God is replaced by his presence in the shape of Jesus. So that's why the crowd go wild. They know that this is a royal return. And they know that this is a holy return. This isn't Jesus the carpenter from Nazareth, wandering unnoticed into Jerusalem. This is Jesus, their God and King, coming into the city and acclaimed as such. But this is something else as well. Yes, this is a royal return. And yes, it is a holy return. But this is also a humble return. Jesus does not put on a big, powerful show. He is a king, but he hasn't got a guard of honour. He is God, but he doesn't come with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven. He comes gentle and riding on a donkey. He's come as king to reign, but he's come to reign on a very different sort of throne. Not in the shape of a chair, but in a different form altogether. A form that our palm crosses, if we had them, would remind us of. Jesus comes in all humility, King and God, though he undoubtedly is, to reign from a cross. So what does all of this mean for us 
And specifically, what does this have to say to us in a time of lockdown and uncertainty, of fear and sickness and death? Let me draw some simple lessons for us and then take us to a different place entirely. First of all, have no doubt that Jesus is King. It is a mystery why such things happen as we are currently experiencing. But nothing happens outside the scope of his sovereignty. His authority is not circumscribed by this. We must and we should trust him in all this because he is undoubtedly Lord over it. Secondly, as well as being Lord over it, he is God with us in it. This crisis is not marked, however we may feel it to be, by the absence of God, but rather by his presence. It's in Matthew 2 that we're reminded that the child born in Bethlehem is Emmanuel, God with us. And so he was, and so he is still. Jesus, our Lord and our God, is present in this crisis. He is God with us in it. And thirdly, Jesus suffers alongside us in this crisis. He is no stranger to our suffering. Remember his cross-shaped throne. It was that cross he entered Jerusalem to accede to, and none other. There is nothing that he does not know of human grief and fear and pain and suffering, because he has entered fully into it with us. So we are not alone in this crisis. He suffers alongside us in it. And all of this brings me in my mind to another place in Scripture, to somewhere that has always been one of my go-to places. It's another place of suffering, and it's a place too in which the kingship, the divinity, and the humility of Jesus are demonstrated in fullest measure. We're on the island of Patmos, where John has been exiled, where he suffers. And in that context, he has the most amazing vision of Jesus. We too may feel that we are in exile from our normal life and suffering too. So we're going to close this reflection with Ruth describing what John saw. And let these words sink in and speak to us in our strange situation today. And we'll keep a few moments silence for a reflection after she's finished. I, John, your brother and companion in the persecution and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamon, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white as white wool, white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze refined as in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining with full force. When I saw him I fell at his feet as though dead, but he placed his right hand on me, saying, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead and see, I am alive forever and ever. And I have the keys of death and of Hades.
And now let us affirm our faith in Jesus, our royal, holy and humble King. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we turn to our intercessions. And I've simply adapted the words that we used last week because these things are surely what we need to pray at this time. And Jesus himself encourages us to be persistent in prayer. This week we will use the following response when you hear the words, Lord Jesus, royal, holy, humble king. Please respond, hear our prayer, we pray. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for all who bear particular responsibility for the rest of us in this crisis. We pray for local and national government, the emergency services and everyone who works to care for the most vulnerable in our society. We pray too for those working hard to ensure that our food banks remain stocked and staffed. And we pray for our churches in this strange time. Even though we cannot meet, strengthen us as your body and give us the inspiration and creativity of your Holy Spirit that we may know just how best we might love and care for those in our communities within the constraints that are placed upon us. And we pray that you will lift this shadow from us, that the spread of this virus be slowed and reversed. Give us hope for the future and protection here in the present. Lord Jesus, royal, a holy and humble King, Hear our, our prayer, prayer, we, we pray. pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for all those who are lonely and fearful of what the future holds. May they know that, you, that they are not alone, that you are with them. We pray especially for those who are sick and suffering. We pray that your caring hand will rest upon them to give them comfort and peace. We pray for all those who care for us in this time of trial. We pray especially for all those working in the NHS. We thank you for them and we pray that you will bless, strengthen and encourage them. And we pray for all those who are bereaved and for those who care for them. May they know that as they weep, so you weep with them. Give them confidence in the resurrection of the dead. And however we can, help us all to be truly good neighbours to one another. Lord Jesus, royal, holy, humble King, hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer, we pray. pray. Lord Jesus, in this troubled time, we pray that you will help us to be people of hope, people who have hopes for a better future beyond all this. And may we be people who see those hopes come to fruition. Help us together to work for a better, a more compassionate, a less acquisitive and a more sustainable and loving world. And Lord, whatever trials and troubles we may currently face, keep us strong in hope and strong in faith that the kingdom you entered Jerusalem to establish will indeed come in all its fullness. Lord Jesus, royal, holy, humble King, Hear our, our prayer, prayer we, we pray. pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining us in this 
short uh, act of worship at the beginning of this Holy Week. Uh, obviously, as this week unfolds, it will be different from normal. We are hoping to have some kind of service for the reaffirmation of commitment to ministry, which we will do amongst the clergy and readers and, and others uh, in, a, in a large video conference call. You will find online a service of prayers and meditations and readings uh, for Good Friday and Ruth and I hope as well to be recording another service next week as we celebrate the resurrection as we must surely do on Easter Sunday. However strange the times in which we live may be, it is the hope of resurrection that sustains us. So Nella, let us close now with a prayer of blessing. So may the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only Son bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. Amen. And may the Spirit who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and all those whom you love, both now and forevermore.